when did you learn to cook, Glenn? Well, as a young man, I found that a great meal was the quickest way to a woman's heart. How romantic. I mean, how do you think NBA players get all those chicks? They're all great cooks. Except Kobe Bryant. His, his secret is different. Quagmire, you're really good. You could probably make money at this. Yeah, maybe you could open a restaurant. Or maybe get a cooking show. You know, the 1130 cooking show on Channel 5 needs a new host. The old one burned off his eyebrows and was just too weird to look at. You should do it, Quagmire. I'll even come along and cheer you on. You'd do that for me? Of course I would. I love cheering people on. Like when I go to NASCAR. Go in a circle. Go in a circle. Go in a circle. Advertise stuff. Advertise stuff. Go in a circle! God, I'm really freaking out over this audition. What if I blow it? Quagmire, when I agreed to come to this, I didn't know what would require this level of emotional support. You Glenn Quagmire? I'm Carson, the producer of the show. Peter Griffin, I should be at work. Okay, let's see what you've got. I think you're gonna like this. Cedar plank salmon with a maple glaze and slow-roasted cherry tomatoes on a bed of mescaline greens. Hmm, not bad. Also, the tomatoes can be eyes and the lettuce can be hair. Look down, there's also a carrot. <laughs> This is great. Terrific food and a hilarious sidekick. This, this is the show. What do you mean? I'm saying you're hired, just as long as your friend joins you. What do you say, Peter? I say let's do it. Whoops. Uh, uh. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What do I, what, what do I do? I, I don't, I don't know what to do now. That was a wrong choice, Peter. Wow, well, Quagmire, look at you. You're a real TV chef. I know. It might sound silly, but being a chef is something I've always dreamed about. I always dream about my house filling up with water. That's crazy. But anyway, thanks for encouraging me, Peter. All right, places. We're rolling in three, two, one. Welcome back to Quagmire's Kitchen. Now, this mince pie is about ready to go. Just needs a pinch of cinnamon. And while we're at it, how about we take this cinnamon challenge? Okay, Peter, we've all seen the internet videos. We're not doing that. I was talking about something else. I was talking about a serious cooking thing. Now, the ingredients of a mince pie are traceable to the 13th century, when returning European crusaders brought back Middle Eastern recipes containing meats, fruits, and, oh boy, spices. Right here, I'm using cloves. <coughs> of course, most people associate mince pie with Christmas. <laughs> But I'll be honest, I'm not afraid of a summer mince pie. I remember the first time I had mince pie. Our neighbor, Mrs. Morin, introduced it to me one afternoon. I had house sat for her while she was visiting her aunt in Vernon, and she wanted to thank me. And oh boy, what a treat it was. You done? Yeah. All right, best two out of three, Cinnamon. Okay, today we're putting together duck breast medallions with a port wine reduction. And as I'm walking you through the steps, watch your screen for Junior Chef Peter's pop-up tips. Helpful hints and food factoids to make your meal a success. Now you're gonna wanna start with a large self-sealing plastic bag. And in that bag, we'll combine one large finely chopped garlic clove, one tablespoon of grated peeled fresh ginger, two teaspoons of five spice powder, a teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of fresh ground pepper. Then you're gonna wanna add the duck breasts, seal the bag, and refrigerate that for at least one hour or up to 24 hours if you want to prepare this ahead of time. Just make sure you remove the bag from the refrigerator one hour before cooking. You're gonna put that in your oven, preheated to 400 degrees. So we just spoon on the drippings and that'll brown the skin nicely. If you bang these metal spoons on everything, it's like stomp. Look at me, I'm huge in 2002. Peter. Nothing like a night at the theater that ends in a headache. Damn it, Peter, that's it. I can't do this show with you anymore. You're fired! What? You can't fire me. Only Mr. Spacely can fire me. Griffin, you're fired! Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Peter, can I come in? Hold on, let me put on my weird old actress turban. Yes? Listen, I saw what happened, but you should know we at the station would hate to lose you. You're a big hit with the viewers. I will not work with that man again. I'm not asking you to. In fact, we'd like to offer you your own cooking show. Hmm. Let me consult with my lawyer. Well, Peter, since the DUIs happen so close together, we don't really have much wiggle room here. I suggest you take the jail time and just get it over with. I'll do it. After October 13th. Okay, now we add the diced tomatoes. 
Yeah, it's gonna keep going here. I like to drizzle these with a fig balsamic. Damn it, what the hell is going on over there? And that's my famous paella that looks and tastes just like a pizza bagel. It's a pizza bagel. Now, as always, add butter to taste. Mmm, delicious! Butter junk! Stop it! Stop the show! What the hell are you doing? You're just pouring melted butter onto frozen foods. You're not a chef. Oh, really? Then why do I already have a restaurant in Orlando's largest indoor water park? This is an insult to anyone who cares about cooking. Either you leave the network or I do. Guys, guys, look, I know how we can settle this. A cook-off. Each of you cooks a meal using a secret ingredient, Iron Chef style. Will we be allowed to use calculators? Um, I... I don't... What? I say bring it on! Fine, a cook-off it is. See you in the kitchen, jerk. I'll see you in hell, loser. Bad day to carpool. Yeah. Okay, Joe, Peter and I are going head-to-head -head in that cooking competition, and they're letting us each use an assistant. Will you help me out? Okay, but just promise me there's no reading. I'm not a strong reader. What? I'm not illiterate. I'm just slow. What are you talking about? I never tried hard in school, because I could always run fast. So you're cool with being my chef helper for the big show? Sure, but I gotta be honest. If it ain't a fish with whiskers, I don't know what to do with it. But if it is? Then sweet sassy molassy. <laughs> Great, don't talk that way when we're on the show. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, and we have a fantastic cooking competition for you today with two fantastic chefs. Really? Y you couldn't find another adjective for fantastic? You used fantastic twice? Who wrote this? Erica did. Wait, is that the one I called fat and we can't fire? Yeah. Let's get this contest started. Big whoop, I can do that. Oh my god, Erica! You killed Erica! Fantastic. Let's begin the Channel 5 cook-off. Remember, the winner gets to keep his TV show. And the secret ingredient is... Butter. Ah, oh, sweet! No, that's Peter's specialty. I was hoping the secret ingredient would be popcorn shrimps. I like smacking your butt earlier. Are the balls different from the cubes? God, what do I do? Joe, check if we have shallots! Okay, I can't see anything on the counter, but I'll do my best. Ah, monster brains! Looks like Chef Griffin is preparing a delicious five-course butter feast. Son of a bitch, I never cook with butter. Joe, grab my recipe book and find a dish where I can substitute olive oil with butter. Joe, come on, hurry! I told you I'm not a strong reader! Joe, pull it together. Hey, Quagmire, FYI, I gotta take off in like 10 minutes. I got a clarinet lesson. What? Oh, I can't do this. <laughs> oh, look at Quagmire. This was his dream. Time's almost up, Peter. We're gonna win. No, we're not. And in a stunning turn of events, Chef Griffin is eating his entire meal. He'll have nothing to serve. Well, that's it. If Chef Quagmire has prepared a dish of any kind, he wins this competition. Let's see what he has. A warm packet of tartar sauce brought in from somewhere else. When are you going to use that, Bonnie said. We have a winner! <laughs> Peter, you threw the cook off for me? I couldn't take your dream away. Heart attack! From your buddy. You're the mini stroke! One with the real heart attack! Talent. You heart attack! Deserve the show. Regular stroke! Not me. You're a good friend, Peter. But I don't want a show either. You don't? Of course not. I mean, look what the show did to us. It destroyed the most important friendship I have. Thanks. You know what? Let's end this for good. How? The same way Paula Dean got her cooking show taken off the air. By saying the one word you can't come back from. What? Say the word? Right now? Yeah. Together. Ready? You bet. <gasps> you could have just quit the show. <laughs>